I want to talk about thyroid medications and the different options that you have to take thyroid hormones. Uh, many people are on thyroid medications and they feel like they're having symptoms from low thyroid or high thyroid and um, not getting the answers they need from their doctor and um, they're reading online and trying to find out more about thyroid medicine. So I'm going to help explain and clarify some of the myths and things that I've heard and, and really make some facts out of it. Uh, I want to introduce myself. I am Dr. Philip Oob. I practice here in Austin, Texas. I'm a functional medicine doctor. So let's talk about thyroid medicines. The number one most prescribed drug is Synthroid, which is levothyroxine, and there's several different brands for levothyroxine, and um, your endocrinologist may tell you that you have to take the brand name Synthroid in order to adequately control your thyroid, and I, I just think this is kind of an overstretch of the truth and a little bit of big pharma influence on uh, endocrinologists. Yes, there are slight dose fluctuations in thyroid medications, and it's because they're measuring micrograms, which are teeny tiny little grains of medicine. The the majority of your thyroid pill is actually just filler because if you really took 50 micrograms of Synthroid, it would be like dust. It, it wouldn't be anything. And so yes, there can be small dose fluctuations and the brand names are held to a tighter standard on their dose fluctuations, but even the generic drugs that are manufactured in America are held to a really strict standard. Not as strict. I believe 5% uh, dose fluctuation on brands and 10% on generic. That number may be a little off, but it at least gives you a ballpark of how close your generic drugs are to the brand name drug. So I usually tell people not to waste a lot of money on brand name Synthroid. I, I don't think that's going to be your magic bullet for um, treating your thyroid problems. The other uh, typical names you may hear are Cytomel or Lyothyronine, Lyothyronine uh, Armor Thyroid, Nature Thyroid, and WP Thyroid. So I want to talk about the differences between each one and why you may need each one versus the other. So let's start with Synthroid or Levothyroxine. There are several different brands of Levothyroxine. Uh, the most common is Synthroid. There's Unithroid. There's Tyrosint. Um, and I feel like there's one more that I, I can't think of, but they're basically all levothyroxine. They're, they just have different fillers and different components, and that's why they have their own individual brand name, but they're basically the same thing. The only one that's gluten-free is, uh, is Unithroid, um, and so that's one of the advantages to taking Unithroid instead of one of the other ones. Synthroid does have one of their pills as gluten-free. I believe it's the 50 microgram, but many of you people who are struggling with Hashimoto's disease or autoimmune disease often have thyroid problems, and you may not realize that your thyroid pill actually has gluten in it. And the reason it's got gluten in it is because gluten's like glue. That's where it gets its name. And um, the majority of your thyroid pill, like I said, is dust, and most of it is, or I should say, most of it is filler, and the actual thyroid ingredient is like dust. It's, it's not very much. So the majority of it is filler and much of the time it is, is gluten. So if you're struggling with your autoimmune antibodies or your Hashimoto's antibodies, um, that might be one of the things you want to consider changing to a gluten-free product. So Synthroid or Levothyroxine type medications are T4 only. So each different thyroid hormone has different components to it. Levothyroxine is T4 only. So when you're taking Levothyroxine, you're expecting your body to naturally convert the T4 to T3, which is great. It would be nice if your body converted it to T3. That's what you want. However, many people have a dream adrenal dysfunction or stressful lifestyles or gut dysfunction, selenium deficiency, their, um, their T3 is not adequately being made. So the only way to get normal thyroid is to take too much T4 or extra T4. And that's not really what their body wants. Their body actually wants more T3. So if you don't have enough T3, you can't really do it with Synthroid or Levothyroxine. You can take more selenium, you can reduce your stress, all those things in order to create more T3. Or what many of functional medicine doctors do is we'll actually supplement your T3. So how do you supplement T3? One of the easiest ways, especially if you're already on a T4 product like Levothyroxine, is to add Cytomel or Lyothyronine. This is a T3 only thyroid medicine. And so you would stay on your level thyroxine to aim for the correct T4 that you and your doctor are aiming for. I'm normally aiming for over 1.0 on the free T4 and over 3.2 on the free T3. So if your T3 is under that goal, then I'm going to go ahead and add Cynomel or Lyothyronine to your regimen and you're going to keep taking your Synthroid. Now we may continue to repair you and see what all we can do to get your body to make its own T3, but that's an, an easy way to stimulate the system because without enough T3, you can feel low thyroid even though your T4 and your TSH may be fine. The other problem that comes along with T4 issues converting into T3 is that many times when the body is stressed and not making much T3, it actually begins making something called reverse T3. 
Reverse T3 is a little complicated to explain, but basically think of it as the anti-T3. It's not only not T3, but it goes around sitting on thyroid receptors, blocking their ability to work. So reverse T3 kind of sucks. You need T4 to turn into T3, but if it's not turning into T3, it's turning into reverse T3. That's the options. And then reverse T3 and T3 are turned into T2 and T1, which are basically inactive thyroid hormones. So if your T4, to recap, if your T4 is good, but your T3 is not, we can add T3 in the version of Cytomel or Lyothyronine. And that way we can adequately adjust the levels to get to the exact amount we're aiming for. And of course, based on clinically. So if you're not doing well and all of a sudden you do great with Cytomel, then we would stop wherever that level may be, even if it's not 3.2 on the lab work. It, it's all about you and your symptoms. So if they're gone, then wh why keep going further? Just aim for a lab normal or lab optimal. The other thing that I have many patients on and many functional medicine doctors use are the, the pig thyroid hormones. These are considered the natural thyroid hormones. Although before I dive into it, I do want to say that levothyroxine and lyothyronine or Synthroid and Cytomel are truly bioidentical thyroid hormones. So Synthroid's gotten an inappropriate rap um, about that, saying that it's not bioidentical, it's synthesized. Yes, they are synthetic compounds, meaning that compound did not exist in nature. We don't farm other human beings to, to harvest their thyroid in order to give it to other human beings. That's kind of sick. Um, so it is synthesized in a lab, but it is synthesized into the exact T4 and T3 compounds that your body needs. So technically synthetic, but bioidentical, just like bioidentical hormones for females. It is a synthetic hormone made in a, a, a lab of some sort, but it is bioidentical to our own human um, thyroid and female hormones. So now that we're done with that topic, I want to go back to the, the pig thyroid hormones, which have been termed more natural, but I wouldn't really consider it more natural because it's from a pig and their thyroid hormones are a little different. I use them plenty of the time and I'm going to explain why. The pig, despite it being chubbier, fatter, and a pig, actually has higher T3 levels. T3 is associated with um, weight loss and, and speeding up metabolism, energy, brain function, all those things. Um, and so if you think about a pig, you're going to think they're going to have low T3 because they're not not exactly the high energy creatures that uh, we want to look like or be like. But for whatever reason, their thyroid is much higher in T3 than humans. I've heard the ratio is four uh, T3 to one T4, and humans are way opposite. We are uh, nine to one, or one to nine. We are one T3 for every nine T4. So that part's a little different. But anyway, the way we use the pig thyroids, and the pig thyroids are desiccated thyroids, um, armor thyroid, nature thyroid, and WP thro uh, thyroid, those are all the natural thyroids that come from pig. They're dried up and they're, they're a different dosing regimen than the synthroids of the world. And so what we do with the, the, the nature thyroid, that's the one I primarily use, is that is a very high T3 product and very low T4 product. And so I frequently use it. If I'm starting someone on thyroid medication, and their T3 is low, which is primarily what I see the most of because I'm seeing people that are adrenally dysfunction, their T3 levels are low. They're not full-blown low thyroid with TSH in the 80s. Normally, I, I'm optimizing it before the TSH gets that high. And so I use a lot of the nature thyroid or pig thyroids. So the advantage is you still get the combo of T4 and T3 in the armor thyroid and WP thyroid and nature thyroid or the pig thyroids, which you don't get in levothyroxine and cytomel. The bad news is that it's a combo that you can't really change. It comes in a static amount, and so you just have to take that amount. You can increase the dose, but the ratio is always the same. So we frequently use the nature thyroid um, to boost the T3 levels and get a little bit out of the T4. And what we'll be doing over time is we'll be watching your levels, watching your symptoms, them see how you do. I normally use the, the Nature Thyroid version, and there's several reasons for that. Nature Thyroid is gluten free, whereas um, Armor Thyroid is not. WP Thyroid is the most clean thyroid product out there. It only has two ingredients. Um, it is definitely gluten free, but it's a little pricier and harder to get. Um, so that's why I mainly use the Nature Thyroid. It's much more accessible, easy to get, and it is gluten free. So that's the main one I go to because it's got the T3 and the T4 already in it and I adjust the levels based on that. So just to reiterate, even though it comes from a pig, it is still considered bioidentical because the pig thyroid hormone is identical to the human thyroid hormone, even though we have different ratios. So that part isn't technically bioidentical, but the hormone itself is bioidentical and your body doesn't know the difference. 
So that's kind of a brief summary of the different types of thyroid hormones that are out there and which ones you might take um, based on what, what symptoms you're having and where your labs are. So I will reiterate my lab values. I'm normally aiming for a TSH less than 2.5, a free T4 over 1.0, and a free T3 over 3.2, and then of course based on symptoms. I've got many women that are at 2.6, and men, sorry, um, that are at 2.6 on their free T3 and they feel perfectly fine. So it's all about symptoms. Um, that's my basic uh, spiel on the different thyroid medications. I hope this helps gain some clarity for you, um, but feel free if you have any questions or comments, please leave them and um, share this video with someone that struggled with thyroid or not sure what's going on with their thyroid or has switched between different medications and not sure what to do with it. So I hope this helps. Thanks, guys.